Hey guys, Aiden here with alexfergus.com. Today, I'm going to talk about the M Wave. So, when you talk about what this device does, you have to use a couple of science terms. In my experience, when you do that, a lot of people start tuning out right away. They think, okay, this is for people who know these terms already. I'm just learning them for the first time, so it's not really for me. I want to make sure that I've addressed that up front. This device is something I would recommend to everybody. And when I say that, I mean I would recommend it enthusiastically. I think the world could be a different place if everyone used this device for one month. We talk about the healthy habits that everybody should have in their daily lives. We usually say diet, exercise. A lot of times we'll throw in meditation. I would actually say diet, exercise, and wave meditation. And the reason I would place it above meditation is it takes much less time and consistency to get really, really significant results with this thing. So it's accessible to a much wider range of people. It's also much easier to quantify the results, see the proof that you're producing an effect. And it's easier to know exactly what that effect is. Where with meditation, the benefits are usually so general that you, you can't really pinpoint this is what it does for me so, quite so easily. Okay, so it's clear that I think you should use the device. What the hell does it do? If you have problems with stress, if you have issues with controlling anger or anxiety, I think everybody alive has issues with those three things, at least two of them. This device will have more impact on reducing those experiences than anything. I have a written review where I go into more detail on exactly what the device does, what it's measuring, how it measures it, how you can use a device and get the optimal results. And you can read that in the description below. I also talk about how you can get these benefits, mostly without using the device for free. Comparing the M-Wave to the inner balance sensor. The M-Wave costs $199. It doesn't have a removable battery. That's a significant cost. There's nothing here that you can take off, try to replace. So what happens with these is they reach a point where they still work, but they won't work when they are removed from a charging source. They'll only work when they're plugged in by USB-C to a power outlet. Now, if you get the inner balance sensor, that's $139 for the model that only works with iPhone, and it's $159 for the, the wireless version that will work with Android or iPhone. So it's cheaper, and you're not dependent on a battery that's going to wear down over time. So unless you particularly like the way that the M-Wave is portraying the results for you, or you just want to be able to use it away from your phone, or you don't have a model of phone that will support the app for the inner balance sensor. The inner balance sensor is a better choice. So taking a look at the M-Wave, we have three displays showing lights, and we have one button that has two bumps on it at the top and bottom. When you're turning the device on, press the button at the bottom for two seconds. And then there is a infrared sensor that hooks to your earlobe. You'll see the lights come on and calibrate for a moment. And, and then to, to actually register your pulse, you'll need to make sure that you lay your thumb on that sensor. You don't press any of the buttons, you just rest it. As long as it's working, you will see this LED at the bottom pulse with your heartbeats. And this way you can make sure the device is still working. There's a, a guided light here going up and down. It's supposed to tell you when to breathe. And I don't know how this part works because when I read the descriptions, it says that it's guiding you on how to breathe, but it's also basing the rhythm on how you're currently breathing. So I don't know how that's supposed to work. As I go into detail on my written review, there is a specific range of breathing that works most effectively with this device. 
and that shouldn't change very much based on how you're currently breathing. As you can hear, the device is beeping now, and when your heart rate variability is medium, this light will turn blue and it'll create the high-pitched tone that it's making now. When it's low, that light will turn red and the device will be silent, which is helpful because it's much easier to respond to positive feedback than a loud beeping noise telling you that you're doing it wrong. So I'm gonna take a minute to breathe properly and make this thing turn green and it'll make a lower pitch tone. <coughs> When you hear that sound, I, I spend extra time going all the way through a cycle with this to show you that every 10 seconds that you spend with a blue light, the higher pitch ding tone, that gives you a dim bar of light that adds up here. You can see two of them now. And when you fill that all the way up to the top, that's when you get that reward sound. And then you'll see a brighter bar of light fill up from the bottom. So if I kept going through those cycles, eventually this whole thing would fill up with those bright bars. But if any time you spend too long in the red, like I'm going red now, talking instead of breathing, then all of that progress resets. I'm not sure how long that takes, because those, those two dim bars are staying right now. That might actually differ from model to model, depending on when they were released. And now I'm going to go back green, so it's not going to show me. Anyway. I think you can see that I had pretty good control over the device there. It only took me a few seconds to go from red and blue to green and stay green for several, for the entire cycle, pretty much. Now that's something that I developed over time from using the device. When I first got this thing, it would only go blue and make that high-pitched tone, which is the second to best mode you want, ever so often, every several breaths. And from using it, I've developed the ability to basically have control over where it lands. So when you're using the device and this pulse sensor at the bottom is picking up your pulse, that's the main thing that it's measuring off of your body. Your, your finger is resting here on the pulse sensor and you have the infrared sensor clipped to your earlobe for the same reason. It's just measuring your pulse. And when it gets that data, there's a calculator. And the calculator is measuring the changes in the amount of time in between your beats. That's how it picks up your heart rate variability. So the way to think about heart rate variability is if your heartbeat was being displayed on a sheet of music and you have that line in between the bars. If your heartbeat was landing right on the line each time so that it sounded like a metronome, like beat, 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 beat. Whether your heartbeat is fast and it's going beat, 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 or it was slow, and it's going B, B, B. That's low heart rate variability. And whether your heart rate is fast or slow, that's a bad thing. Why is that a bad thing? For the most immediate purposes of using the M-Wave and getting the results that you can get from this device, it's a good thing. It's a bad thing. For the purposes of using the M-Wave and the results that you can most immediately get from using this device, the ones that you'll feel happening in your body. The reason it's a bad thing is because it tells you which side of your nervous system is operating. Most people know what a fight or flight reaction is. A bus is flying at you on the road and you're walking across. When you see that, you're going to get a jolt of adrenaline through your body and you're going to be prepared to react to the situation. Your heartbeat will probably take several minutes after you get over to the sidewalk to calm back down or you might, you know, flip a symbol with the guy that just sped past you like that because you're still in that fight or flight reaction. But what people don't realize is that fight or flight reaction is happening to varying degrees all day. So the technical term for the fight or flight system is a sympathetic nervous system. The other end of that is the parasympathetic nervous system. So where we call fight or flight the sympath so where we call the sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight, we refer to the parasympathetic, usually with rest and digest. So at any given moment, you can be operating all the way over on your sympathetic side, 
or you could be all the way over here running your parasympathetic nervous system, or you could be dead in the middle, or you could be 50% of the way shifted towards your sympathetic, or you could be 50% of the way shifted towards your parasympathetic nervous system. So you're operating the sympathetic nervous system that creates your fight or flight response all the time. Anxiety issues, anger issues, and most of the damage that comes from stress is not a direct reaction to the external stressor. Most of those harms come from you overactivating your sympathetic nervous system. That's what takes the toll on your body. That's what keeps you from digesting your food or sleeping well. By using the M wave, you can gain control over which side of your own nervous system you're activating. And you can learn to avoid overactivating your sympathetic nervous system, even when you're exposed to things that make you angry or cause anxiety or stress you out.